So I'm back again to our 27 unit building. So if you haven't checked out the tour of the building, go check out the previous video. In this video, we're gonna share about the numbers because you know I know you guys have been waiting for the numbers. How much we bought this building for? How did we find this deal? How did we you know finance this deal? How did we find the money for buying the deal? And you know what's the potential in this deal? What can we turn this into? You know first of all like and at the end all these crazy things happening in the market, the interest rate going up, and you know the market is going crashing, and you know all those fear is going on but we pulled a trigger on a biggest building so we're gonna share all those details so stay tuned namaskar welcome back to my channel this is aditya soma if you're new here i'm a real estate investor and real estate agent here in windsor sx and you know on this channel i talk a lot about how to achieve financial freedom through real estate investing because that's what you know I was able to achieve financial freedom and you know I don't want to keep it to myself because I want you guys to achieve that financial freedom so that's why this channel this channel is for you to achieve your financial freedom so make sure to ask questions you know even while you're watching this video any questions pop in your mind make sure to leave a comments below and you know help me with that uh, thumbs up button because that will help uh, to reach this video for more potential people who are interested in this kind of content and that gives me confidence to make more videos like this so that you can get educated so now coming to the numbers of the building before i get into the numbers if you haven't checked out the tour of the building make sure to click this tag here because i we did a whole tour of the building and you know what's the unit looks like what's the property look like and in this video like i mentioned we'll stick to the numbers so first of all the first question is how did we find this deal so first of all i didn't find the deal because my partner and good friend here zishan found it so zishan you know how were you able to find this deal actually back in november i started mm -hmm. you know prospecting deals like of this size and mm -hmm. what i did was actually gather a list of buildings that was interested in just mm -hmm. by driving for dollars or even looking it up you know on google maps yeah and then you know this one stood out to me because you know i was familiar with the area and i, mm -hmm. I really always liked the area so what we did was actually we mailed the owner so mm -hmm. we, we got the owner's address you can get it from the from the city tax records yeah um so we actually sent a bunch of letters to the owner and we never got a response from the owner yeah then eventually you know after keep following up with the mail and you know try to you know knock on the doors and see you know contact the owner yeah. sometimes mm -hmm. they're not mm -hmm. receptive yeah. to that yeah. and that time mm -hmm. he wasn't receptive really and then eventually we did get a call from him but it came from a realtor so mm -hmm. sometimes people don't feel comfortable working yes. without a realtor yeah so he brought a realtor on and then we've been working with that realtor you know he's representing both of us technically and then we started the whole process right yeah of actually speaking to him and you know able to write an offer right yeah so, yeah so again you know i'll pause it there because yeah. that's even personally i'm learning that from you right yeah. if you're an investor if you're in a different city or wherever you are that's a really good strategy if you can find the problem properties that you're interested in and go find those you know addresses uh, yeah. because there it's a public data a lot yeah. of the information like it's legal right it's legal yeah so if you probably there is a, some kind of a subscription to pay for to get this well actually it's, it's honestly free it's just every municipality has a different way of doing it so mm -hmm. for example in Windsor all you have to do which is I've been doing it for a while and a lot of people don't know is that you can literally get a list a uh, list of properties mm -hmm. that you're interested in possibly and send it to the city and say look I, I want to look at the tax record for this we really just want to see the mailing address for the owner Mm -hmm. and so that's public that's free you just have to book an appointment with the city you know during covid is a little bit harder yeah but if you push them you can do it because it's public it's not yeah. it's not restricted information we're just getting the mailing address you take pictures or you take notes and you get it down mm -hmm. and they actually label the addresses for you some some municipalities want you to go look through the records the books yourselves but in that sense you have to take a proactive approach you can't yeah. just you know expect the deal to come to you or yeah on realtors sometimes you can always depend to for them to bring the deals to you yeah. so kind of do your own deal sourcing yeah that, that's that's a great strategy especially buildings like this in Windsor they don't come up on the market like i yeah. haven't probably you know how many properties we have seen in last 2 years a building like this yeah no probably i would right. say i saw only one building in last mm -hmm. Two years, only one building, but there were a lot of transactions happened in the back end. Right, exactly. You know, recently Skyland bought a like 120 units something on the riverside. Right. No one even knows until you look into the data. Yeah, and and the bigger the property, it's usually traded off privately and off market exactly. or pocket listing, right? Because yep. it's a smaller circle of people buying, and also not everybody wants people to walk through their building. Exactly. In a large building, you have 40 units. You don't want people in and out. You know, tire pickers. You want firm buyers that you trust. Exactly. So it's a smaller list and group of people, right? So yeah. Yeah, yep. so that, that's a great uh, strategy. And you know, now many people have been asking me, how much did you guys buy this building for? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we got it at, uh, after going back and forth quite a few times, we landed at 3.8 million, right? Yep. So, so 3.8 million, which comes around 140 per door. Yep. So if, if I have to put it, 
actually it's still like in the Windsor market when we bought it per door on the market they're selling around 200,000 so we got like almost 30% uh, yeah. under the value yeah, exactly. under the price and then the premium of the location you got to look at factors yeah, and then that's another the construction thing. and solid brick which those are usually traded a little bit more, more premium, premium yes yeah so that was another bonus as well yeah yeah, yeah. and so we got it for 3.8 million but you know you actually locked it up before even you got to me yeah. you have a firm <laughs> deal I'm like, oh, how are we going to finance it? Well, yeah. that was the biggest question for me. How did you guys got the financing? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, when we first put the offer out, you know, we, I always put in a VTB, a component, at least mm -hmm. a little bit, something that we can get from the seller. And initially, when speaking to the realtor, they're saying, you know what, the seller is not open to a VTB. Mm -hmm. until, That's always the typical answer. Yeah, they always say no right away, initially, yeah. right? But um, what we did is like, like you know, let, let us come down, let me come down and meet with the owner and, mm -hmm. you know, at least talk to him and then explain what we're trying to do here and get an understanding of his circumstance, why he's even selling, yeah. what, where is he parking the money. Yeah. So it's just different when you're actually negotiating directly with the seller, I feel. Very, and very different. understand where he's coming from and, you know, actually he's, you know, a really good relationship now. So yeah. we're able to get a, initially a 70% VTB. Yeah. 70% so VTB is what we got. We were at 5% interest only. That was initially okay. Yeah. Stay there. <laughs> yeah. So then, you know, after doing more further due diligence, you know, and, and finding out more about the property at the same time, the financing world has changed yeah and because the interest rates are going up yeah and so what we did was essentially ask for 80 percent ltv and obviously that's going to that service more so we asked for four percent interest only in exchange for that we did provide a lender fee but in the long term we're now off to bring 300 exactly. less to the table for yep. down payment and our carrying cost is a lot less than it yep. was before and for them it's a bonus because they're making more interest because we're giving them the lender fee exactly so on a month to month we're doing better our overall cost has gone up a bit but in terms of what we got we actually got for two years as well. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. that's a very cool part. Like so many things, lessons you guys can take from here. First of all, making the connection, genuine connection with the owners, because you know, the biggest reason I feel why he gave 80%, you know, a loan to value, which is a lot of money because, you know, getting a 80% loan to value from a traditional lender for 4% yeah, is yeah. also impossible. So getting from a VTB from a seller is not easy. So one thing I realized what you have done is like, you know, you have established an in-person connection, you know, with the relation with the person and they liked and trusted you that was the my impression because when he yeah. came and showed me the property he was like you know already liked you a lot yeah exactly young guys you know trying to do something here and i want to be part of that their success yeah and you have to understand that where he's coming from too right he's he's owned this building forever so he wants yeah. to give it to someone who's going to take care of it and has a good plan for the property right so you just have to know where they're coming from understand their situation and kind of respect that and you know actually be very likable when you're when you're talking to them right yeah exactly you know building that relation is definitely a key and now coming to what's the potential right you know at what cap rate did we buy this building at and you know what are we planning to do so you know app purchase it's around a four percent cap rate which is obviously kind of in line or, or a little bit below what this quality of building is trading at yeah but, but to be honest like yeah. in the market yeah there are not that many properties are actually coming with the has is cap as rate. is yeah that's the because thing, most right? of the properties are like you know the one we when we bought this building the one that sold 31 unit building oh you know yeah that? over that 250 like, per door or something yeah <laughs> something crazy 200 per 200 door per but door. the net income was actually lower than this right. the cap rate was like less than one person mm -hmm. because there is no cap rate they're buying yeah. based on the potential rent yeah exactly and you know we were comfortable going in at a little bit lower cap rate because of number one the financing that we have in place yeah. and the plan you know we've done this before turnover units so you know one thing about the rents average rents are about are about you know 850 875 yeah. all inclusive and you know with a good turnover plan obviously it's a little bit more difficult in ontario to do that but um you know, there's a really good spread. We can rent one bedrooms, you know, yeah. 1200 plus, you know, and we're putting in utilities. Yeah, so um, we got like, you know, almost uh, 14 doors that are like one bedroom. So for one bedroom, potentially I rented in my building for 1295. And for two bedrooms, we got like six two bedrooms. Right. So those two bedrooms can be around like 1500 exactly. and the bachelor probably thousand dollars so i got 1090 so that's the potential mm -hmm. and and the average rents were 800 and i think 17 dollars something right. somewhere in there yeah. so if we can turn over even like 10 units out of 21 mm -hmm. residential we are looking at what the cap rate with the cap rate of five percent our property value will go up by almost 1.4 million exactly
Yeah, and then that's just on the rents. If we're talking about on the expense side too, if we start yeah. reducing the expenses with, you know, obviously we're passing on the expense, the hydro expense. Yes. We're putting in all efficient light fixtures right now. It's all fluorescent on 24 seven. Yeah. Uh, the water efficiencies we can put in with- The toilets. Toilets is a huge thing, right? Yeah. Even even if it's not renovated, you know, we can still change the toilet. Yep. The fixtures, uh, lower flow items, right? And just all overall management, even managing yeah. it better improves the expenses it's, as yeah. well. So, you know, let me pause on there, like the expense part, because first we talked about increasing the income because the, with the multifamilies, always how can you increase the rents? Uh, how can you increase your income? But also the biggest thing is this building, because it's an older building, we're all one hydrometers. So that means the currently the owner paying a lot of expenses. He's paying for hydro, he's paying for water and gas. So when he's paying for all those utilities, if there is no efficient elements in the building, right. because biggest thing that was we noticed, like the light, you know, if you have noticed, the lights are not that efficient. The toilets are not that efficient. And the heating system itself is not efficient. Yeah. Like we talked in the previous video, like, you know, the baseboard heating. Hmm. So like it's what- very expensive, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. And what we did in the previous, in our you know journey with the multifamilies, we put ductless systems. Hmm. That reduces your heating bill by almost 60 to 70%. Right. Exactly. So that's a huge. And then now we put a separate hydrometer. So now we don't even all pay any hydro. Exactly. And that itself is like almost 30% of the expense. Yeah, 30 to 40%, you know, could, you know, reduce the overall bottom line. So, yeah. you know, obviously that takes some time to get everybody on it. Exactly. But, you know, even even let's say 30, 40% of them are now paying mm -hmm. their own hydro. It's going to yeah. be a huge bump in our valuation. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, this sounds great, mm -hmm. but you know, a lot of investors, especially like you mentioned in Ontario, it's not easy to bump yeah. up the rents. So what is the plan here? You know, because I know you did successfully. I did some of them. I'm still work in progress. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to you gotta be patient, but also got to be pretty firm with your plan, right? So yeah. you come and build a plan in terms of negotiations and things like that. And, you know, we do do cash for keys and things yeah. like that. And so that that's actually a yeah. biggest thing that mm -hmm. I personally seen like for you and for me and a couple of our good friends who are into multifamily sector is cash for key because we cannot force anyone. We have to negotiate with the tenants. Have a look here. Uh, we'll do this. This is for you. Or but we gotta you know trade in for this rent. Or you know here look we're gonna it's going to be a little bit more uncomfortable for you. We're going to do some lot of renovations in the building, yeah. but we'll give you an option to buy out. Like, you know, we'll pay you X amount of money so that you can go find another comfortable place. And while we are renovating this one. Exactly. And um, at the same time, if we have a vacant, you know, we might offer it to existing tenants, right? And kind of move tenants around that way. And then just, you know, overall improve the building so that we're attracting different tenants Better in as well. Place. So, mm -hmm. but besides the tenant base is still pretty good here overall. Yeah, exactly. And if we had to keep an you know, all majority or amount a decent amount of them we're, you know we're happy to do that because they are good paying tenants yeah um so we got to get creative well you know that's what we do and that's why we've been doing this and have success turning mm -hmm. over buildings and getting into that burr strategy is that we have to create a plan and work the plan right yeah yeah and you know that that's what brings me to the next question is like you know we are our plan is at the end burring this multifam so which we have done in the past and now we are pretty confident with this building we can do it even in this crazy market because of the fundamentals are solid location you know pretty damn good location like I mentioned in the last video, this property is located in a central location where the proximity to hospital, teasers, and the major employer nowadays like the bridge construction and the Riverside and uh, St. Clair College downtown campus, University of Windsor, all these are within like three to four kilometers from the building. And it's sitting right in front of the bus stop. So, and with all the elements that needed for the building. So the, the tenants get everything like, you know, they have the parking. Yeah, so that's why like we are pretty confident, you know, first of all, like no matter what happens to the market, we can still, you know, hold this and, and you know. And yeah, it's a long-term approach, right? We're exactly. not here to do a quick turn like you know previously maybe in the last two years the burrs were a lot quicker yeah or we're prepared to hold longer term mm -hmm. and since we do we have this seller financing for two years we're yeah. going to take advantage of that and exactly and it's only for four person interest yeah. right right like so, no matter what happens to the interest in next uh, one two years we are still fine exactly and you know backup plan is like if we couldn't still if the rates go up maybe we can renegotiate with the yeah. owner see hey look you know we were planning to do another one year or two years yeah, and that's the benefit, like you said, right? Build that relationship with relationship, the seller. Yes. So if, you know, down the road, maybe this project or other projects, they might be interested in, in funding something if, you know, if they're retiring owners and they don't really have anywhere to park their money. Yeah. And that might be incentive to them to get involved with us some more if, you know, we're, we've been paying 
obviously the mortgage right on time yeah. we're not causing any issues improving the building so they feel comfortable lending to us right so yeah. and you know the last final question that many people had is like you know how did we able to get the money the down payment the 20% and the plus closing cost the yeah. realtor fees that you know all the closing cost and the renovation budget how did we able to find the money yeah i mean i mean that's you know capital raise is always a big part of the thing people usually get scared of that yeah. but um you know you and i both you know so i brought dt on board because he has a network first of all yeah so he's really good on that in terms of marketing and and he has a huge list of people that he's already done business with or he has in contact with i connected with him but other than that it's you know it's making those investor calls we have the yeah. credibility we know that and now we just cater to our list that we've been building you know yeah nurture your list and reach out to them you know explain the deal um you know create that relationship with people and then kind of just find out what their strategy is and and see if that aligns with what we're doing exactly right? with the goals right yeah. like you know so i will add on to that like you know biggest thing is we've been building connections right. for years yeah you know since you were you started investing your journey since i started my investing journey mm-hmm. we are not like sitting in the you know sh- shade and just like oh i'm just buying for yeah. myself we are mm-hmm. always reaching out to people you know we are just building genuine connections whenever like you know some people um, not everyone will come on to the board but you know people who are aligned with the same goals that we are trying to achieve yeah because for this building like it's it's a, it's not a short term like exactly. you mentioned you know it's a long term and people who wants to have that you know lifetime retirement income and you know they want to gift that to their kids because this is the kind of buildings that you know it's like you know 10 20 years plan yeah definitely like a legacy building and then on top of that you know we have investors who've already done business with so yeah, that makes exactly. things easier we've we've provided them their 100% capital yeah, back think, and bird it yes you know so exactly. most of them are actually our previous All people exactly. that we've been on business with and it was like yeah. within 3 weeks yeah we so we had obviously like coming down to the wire things happen and whatever right but we sorted it out you know we had we had people available mm-hmm. um although it was at times got stressful but yeah, you know we yeah. pulled it off and so if you are the investor yeah. watching who already invested with us like you know thank you so much <laughs> because without you guys you know we were not able to pull this and also if you're you know if you have like 50,000 100,000 sitting aside and you want to get into this projects like this and you want to learn and you want to build wealth for yourself we have more projects coming up yeah. because you know this is the opportunity this is the time that we feel there is an opportunity coming up so if you want to be in our database if you want to talk to us one on one just you know get to know what kind of opportunities in pipeline for future just dm us you know on instagram is there like you're active on any social media yeah instagram and you know website and whatnot you can you can find me it's pretty yeah. easy to find us anybody nowadays yeah, exactly. so we're all we're all online now and uh dk yeah. is a lot more active so he's got a big youtube channel and an instagram following and I guess TikTok and all yeah, that, right? Exactly. So, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a little bit more in the background, but yeah. uh, working on it. And, and then that's know, what you know. Yeah. I'm excited about having the right partnerships, exactly. right? Like uh, we can talk more on that part le- yeah. later on. But having that perfect partnership. So yeah, uh, guys, hope you enjoyed this. You know, transparent knowledge sharing. If you did, I really appreciate if you can give that thumbs up and leave a comment. If you have any questions, are you going through any deals? You know, any challenges that you're facing? And uh, before we, I say goodbye for now. Zishan, do you have any other points to add on for this? this one no not really i mean you know we spoke about the opportunity and you know this is what we we've been doing for the last few years in multifamily space we're confident to get in we love the location we love the value add opportunity we love the relationship we have with the seller the financing so a bunch of wins obviously it's not going to be easy yeah. nothing's going to be easy so it's definitely going to be you know we're going to have to put the work and the time in and you know build the teams to in order to help us yeah. do that but again we see the long term approach and you know Overall, I think that it will be a great project for our investors as well and moving along in other projects as well once we have yeah. the confidence after this one. Yeah, exactly because you know, it's a oil uh, well where once we refinance, mm-hmm. once we have the funds out which we are projecting to give our investors all their investment within 2 to 3 years. So once their funds out and again going to go back put in and continues to reap the in- returns on this building continues mm-hmm. to go for 5-10 right. years down the road. So okay. that's it guys. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure don't forget to hit that like button because you know if you enjoyed, if you took all this information, please don't keep it for yourself because you have to be gratitude by showing that thumbs up and leave a comment. And we'll see you in the next video. If you haven't checked out the video tour and the burr on my other multifamily, and if you'd like to see more videos from Zishan, let me know in the comments <laughs> <laughs> so I can definitely, push him to get more. So thank you guys. See you in the next video. Thank you.